2.6 is talking about rational functions and asymptotes. Now that is a word that we used last year, asymptotes, and we're going to again re-explain what an, an asymptote is. Um, and we have first a rational function. A rational function is a ratio of two polynomials where we have f of x equals n of x over d of x, where both of these are polynomials. So we have a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial, a polynomial in the denominator. Remember, a polynomial is very broad. Any uh, thing with terms that have whole number um, exponents and rational coefficients would be a polynomial. So remember, for rational functions, the domain, we always set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. That will tell us what x can't be. At those values, we have what are called either vertical asymptotes, which is a vertical line that the function gets close to but never touches, or a hole in the graph. Now, holes are new this year in the graph, uh, in, in this class. Uh, last year, we just had vertical asymptotes, and the function could never be defined at that vertical asymptote because we would get zero in the denominator for those x values. So to calculate the domain of a rational function, um, we will want to factor, if possible, the numerator and denominator, and that will tell us uh, a great deal about the function. Now, when we were dealing with rational functions earlier in last year, and we factored the top and bottom, we would cross things off if they had common factors. You said, oh, we have an x plus 2 in the numerator, x plus 2 in the denominator, we can cross them off. And it made the function more um, appealing to deal with. But now that we are graphing rational functions, we can still cancel common factors. But when we do cancel common factors, there's a hole in the graph and not an asymptote. So we'll talk about how to graph those tomorrow, but note that if you can cancel a factor from the top and bottom, instead of an asymptote, there's going to be a hole. So asymptotes, if they have, no, if the numerator and denominator don't have any uh, common factors, then we have an asymptote at the zeros of the denominator. Okay, whatever value makes the denominator zero, we have a vertical asymptote, which we abbreviate as VA. Then if we look at a horizontal asymptote, abbreviate HA, we have three cases. Sorry, we have three cases. First, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so we have a bigger exponent in the bottom, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If the degrees are exactly the same, then we take the ratio of the leading coefficient of the top and bottom, and that would be our asymptote. That's what this says right here, ratio of the leading coefficients. Remember, leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable with the largest exponent. Then if our degree in the numerator is bigger by 1, we have what is called an oblique asymptote or slanted asymptote. And then if the degree in the numerator is bigger by more than 1, then there is no asymptote. Another term, new term, is called continuous. The, so if a function has a hole or a VA, the function is not considered continuous. The best way to describe continuous is that if I can draw the graph without lifting up my pencil because of a hole or because of an asymptote or anything like that, then the function is continuous. So our quadratics, you know, our quadratic, we can draw that whole U without lifting up our pencil. It is continuous. Those cubic functions or third, uh, fourth degree functions, those polynomials that we graphed at intercept form, those were continuous. We never had to, to lift up our pencil. So example number one, determine 
the domain of the function, decide whether the function is continuous and identify any holes, VAs, or HAs. So example A, we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. So we're going to factor the top and bottom. The top factors to uh, x plus 3 times x plus 3. And the bottom factors to x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now we can cancel off the x plus 3 on the top and bottom, and we're left with x plus 3 over, we don't need parentheses, x plus 3 over x plus 1. Okay, so then our domain, our domain, x could not equal negative 1 because of this right here. But because we canceled off an x plus 3, x also couldn't equal negative 3. So since, um, since we don't have a domain of all real numbers, this is not continuous. So not continuous. And then we have, all right, so our horizontal asymptote, the degree of the top is 2, the degree of the bottom is 2. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients, so 1 over 1, which is 1. And horizontal asymptote is always y equals. Vertical asymptote is always x equals, and it's always x equals what makes the denominator zero after we canceled off any common factors. So x equals negative one. And then lastly, we had a hole. We had a hole where we could cancel out these x plus three factors. So it's gonna be at x equals negative three, we have a hole. Right, letter B, we have f of x equals 3 over x plus 5. Well, our domain is all real, uh, cut. So our domain is whatever makes the denominator equal 0. So domain is going to be x can equal negative 5. Then that means this is not continuous. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 because the degree in the bottom is 1. The degree in the numerator is 0 because there's no x. And then a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. So your, your values that your domain can't equal should always appear as a VA. Or in this case, it appear, one appeared at a, as a whole. The other one appeared as a VA, a vertical asymptote. Right, letter C, we need to factor this. This is a difference of two squares in the denominator. So you have x minus 1 times x plus 1, which means our domain is x cannot equal positive 1 and x cannot equal negative 1, which makes this not continuous not continuous and we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals since they're both uh, degree two of the numerator and denominator it is four over one which is four and then our vertical asymptote x equals one and x equals negative 1, and we don't have any holes because we weren't able to cancel anything off. Letter D. We look at the denominator for the domain, x squared plus 1. Is it possible that if x squared plus 1 equals 0, does it have any real solutions? No, it doesn't because x squared would then equal negative 1, and we would have imaginary solutions. So that means the domain 
is negative infinity comma infinity, which means that it is continuous. There are no vertical asymptotes at all um, because the degree in the top is bigger than the degree in the bottom, so there's no um, horizontal asymptote, no vertical asymptote. There is that uh, slant asymptote or the oblique one, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but there are the three things that we're concerned with now, holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes. We don't have any of those. So on the next page here, we're going to talk about the most basic rational function, you know, the mother function that where all of these come from, f of x equals 1 over x. Well, the domain of this one would be x cannot equal 0. Your horizontal asymptote would be y equals uh, 0 because the degree in the bottom is bigger than the degree in the top. And then your vertical asymptote would be x equals 0. So for this one, I want to construct a table just so we can have an idea of what's going on. And then we're going to talk about how we don't need tables uh, to make these graphs anymore. So over here, let's construct this table. So we're going to do kind of like what we did for um, our vertex from the quadratic is put the asymptote in the center. There's no y value at the asymptote. And then we're going to go 1, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. If we substitute 1 in this function, we get 1 over 1, which is 1. We substitute 2 in this function, we get 1 over 2, or 1 half. Substitute negative 1, we get negative 1 and substitute negative 2, we get negative 1 half. So let's go plot those points. First, our vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. Our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. And we had the point 1 comma 1 and 1 comma uh, 1 half. We had negative 1 comma negative 1 and then negative 2 comma negative 1 half. So our graph will look like this, where we get close to these asymptotes but never touch. And there's going to be times where we have more than one asymptote, so instead of making a table every time, we're going to use something called vertical behavior as opposed to end behavior. So what vertical behavior tells us is what is the function doing really close to this asymptote? Is it going uh, to be positive or is it going to be negative? So we test just to the left and right of all vertical asymptotes. And when we're testing, we're not trying to get an actual value. We're testing to see, is the value going to be positive or negative? Not, is it positive 5? Is it negative 26? It's just positive or negative. So let's draw in a, an asymptote and talk about the ways that it could happen. So on the left side, we could come up, which we would say positive left up. LU, or it could go down, so we say negative L down, left side down. Or from coming from the right, the right side could go up, and we would say positive RU, right up, or could go down, we say negative RD, right down. So going back to our function here, our asymptote is at x equals 0. So we're going to test f of negative 0.1 and f of positive 0.1 because that gets really close to the asymptote. And again, we're just trying to figure out if it's positive or negative. So we substitute this in. It's going to be 1 over negative 0.1. Well, we know it's going to be a negative, so it's going to be left down. 
because a positive divided by a negative is negative. So then we do oops, 1 over positive 0.1. That's going to be a positive number, so that's going to be right side up, which is what we have here. The right side of this, if we, if we approach this asymptote from the right, it goes up. If we approach the asymptote from the left, it goes down. Now, end behavior. We're going to do a similar test for end behavior, but we're going to pick numbers that are way, way to the left and to the right of our graph. And we're going to compare it to the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to test for right and left. And we're going to compare to HA, the horizontal asymptote. So again, we have our horizontal asymptote here. And if we're above, our graph would go like this if we were above to the left. If we were below, it would look like that. If it was above coming from or going to the left side, it would look like that. And then it would look like that if it was below the asymptote. You may say, well, why do we have to do both? Well, if we have more than one asymptote, one vertical asymptote, that's when things get a little bit dicey. Um, and also, we're going to find out in some situations we can actually cross a horizontal asymptote. So this test will help us determine what happens to the function. So for the end behavior, we're going to test points like f of 1,000 and f of negative 1,000. And again, we're just comparing it to the horizontal asymptote. I don't really need to know what the actual value is. I just want to know, is this value, when we substitute this in, 1 over 1,000, is this less than or greater than our horizontal asymptote of y equals 0? Well, this one is a little bit easier to do in our head, so we get 0 0.001, which is greater than 0, so it's above on the right side. And see, well, how do you know if it's the right or the left side? Positive 1,000 for x is on the positive or the right side of the graph. Negative 1,000 is on the left side. So 1 over 1,000, negative 1,000 is negative 0 0.001 which is less than zero, so below. So if we look at the, the left side of this graph that we drew with the table, the left side should be below the asymptote and the right side should be above. And that's true with what happened here. All right, so example two down here, we're gonna determine the domain. We're going to determine the functions are continuous or not continuous, identify holes, verticals, and asymptotes like we did before, and then determine vertical behavior and end behavior. So first, the domain. Our denominator is x squared plus 1. And remember, if we try to set this equal to 0, we get no real solution. So that means the domain is neg infinity comma infinity, which means this is continuous. Then letter C, the degree of the denominator is bigger than the numerator, so my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. There are no VAs, no vertical asymptotes, and holes, there are no holes as well. And since there are no um, vertical asymptotes, there's no vertical behavior. No vertical behavior because no vertical asymptotes. How can we have a vertical behavior if we don't have an asymptote for it to behave around? Okay, and then our end behavior. So we're going to do f of negative 1,000 
and we're going to do f of positive 1,000. So if we substitute that into the original function, we get 3 times 1,000 minus 1 over negative 1,000 squared. Negative 1,000 squared plus 1. So now what this is going to equal, um, again, we don't really need to know what that value exactly is. We just need to know, is it less than or greater than the um, horizontal asymptote? Now, if you wanted to type it into your calculator, you would get negative 0.003 or something along those lines. But, whoops, this should be, but if we look at the numerator, the numerator is going to be negative because 3 times 1,000 is 3,000 minus negative 3,000 minus 1 is going to be negative 3,001 divided by 1,000 squared is going to be negative 1,000 squared is going to be positive and then plus 1 is still going to be positive so we have a negative over a positive which gives us a negative value. So for, for this these graphing problems we're really going to have to be um, aware of again not what the actual values are but positive or negative to help us with the other parts of the problem. So we get negative 0 0.003 which is less than zero so it's going to be below. And you might say well I know that this one is going to be above. Don't fall in the, tra uh, the trap that um, just because one of them is above, the other one has to be below. It's going to be that way most of the time, but not every time. All right, now, example B, or part B, has quite a few things going on with it. It's two separate things. Well, this is not in the form that we had up here, you know, single fraction over or a single single function over a single function. So we have to combine these two fractions. Well, how do we do that? Well, if we multiply the top and bottom of this one by x plus 2 over x plus 2, okay, this is really going to be 3x plus 2 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x plus 2. Well, now they have the same denominators. I can combine those. So we get 3x plus 6 minus 1, because we distribute that, over x plus 2, which is 3x plus 5 over x plus 2. All right, so now we can do this problem with this right here, 3x plus 5 over x plus 2. Okay, so the domain. Well, we can't have a 0 in the denominator. So part A is domain. Domain is x cannot equal negative 2 because that gives us a 0 in the denominator, which makes this non-continuous, not continuous, Part C, oops. Part C is identifying our asymptotes and holes. So HA, our horizontal asymptote, is going to be, since the degrees are both 1 in the numerator and denominator, um, it's going to be Y equals 3 over 1, or 3. vertical asymptote is going to be x equals negative 2 and our holes we have no holes none so now we're going to do our vertical behavior for our vertical behavior just seeing how much room I have for our vertical behavior We're going to pick numbers close to our vertical asymptote of negative 2. So D, so vertical behavior. 
So I'm going to do f of negative 2.1 and f of negative 1.9. So you may notice that they're both negative numbers because I'm trying to get values close to negative 2. Okay, so we have then 3 times negative 2.1 plus 5 over negative 2.1 plus 2. So the numerator... The numerator is going to be negative because we have 3 times negative 2.1 plus 5. So we have a negative, oops, sorry, negative over negative 2.1 plus 2 is also going to be negative. So it's going to be a positive. So left side is going to be up. Then the right side, 3 times negative 1.9 plus 5 over negative 1.9 oops negative 1.9 plus 2 well this top is still going to be negative so negative over but the bottom is going to be positive negative 1.9 plus 2 is going to be a positive number which so this is going to give us a negative answer so that means the right side is going down Now, end behavior. End behavior. So we're going to do f of negative 1,000 and f of positive 1,000. So 3 times, 3 times negative 1,000 plus 5 over negative 1,000 plus 2. That is equal to 3.001, which is bigger than 3. So this is going to be above. And then we have 3 times positive 1,000 plus 5 over 1,000 plus 2. And what that does is that gives us 2. 999, which is less than 3, so that will be below. All right, so I know that the idea, this idea of plugging in values and getting just some estimates is foreign to us, but the more we do it, the better we'll be at it. And when we take uh, calculus in the future, a lot of those problems are not necessarily about what these values are, but what do they approach? Um, are they positive? Are they negative? And you solve problems with those methods. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like it and subscribe.